good good evening uh, women of god uh, thank you for coming you were uh, you are in this broadcast we are so glad to see you in this uh, broadcast uh uh so many indian people they don't know only jesus christ and in this pandemic time yeah in the in this pandemic time so many people they are watching the videos and clips when they will see the see this video clips and they, they will listen the word of god and they will come to the lord jesus christ that's why we started this program uh we are so glad to see you in this broadcast uh, praise god and thank god for your coming to our broadcast we we so so blessed in this morning and in this evening uh women of god this is your time uh, take your time and praise the word of god and how god leads you you can this is your time Thank you so much pastor. I uh am so grateful for you uh pastor and the uh gift that you are to the body of Christ and I love and honor you and your wife and the work that you are doing in India. I pray for you guys daily and the work that uh the pastors are are doing there and I am so humbled and honored to share the word on this evening. evening or this morning uh with those who will be listening even in the future i am coming from uh the book of acts which is a new testament text and in the book of acts verse number uh chapter number 1 excuse me verse number 8 it reads like this but you shall receive power when the holy spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth for the time that is ours i want to talk from the topic power power one of the things that concerned me or either confused me with this text was that it was in a very changing time and a very turbulent time for the church and for the people of this time it it was a time in which they were trying to figure out how life was going to be after Christ had seemingly left the scene It was a time when it felt like the Roman army was moving forward and that those who had been oppressed and suppressed would never ever see relief. It was at a time when people needed to have some hope. And I I could I questioned why Christ would not have left the church with some money. or left the believers with money and i believe that christ knew that the economies would change and that the value uh of money would change and i i wondered i wondered why christ did not leave the church or his believers with a military marching machine that would be able to overtake and overrun Rome and to be able to be stronger than any of the army and i believe that that christ had the wisdom to know that although they may have some strength through a military it was going to take the strength and the power of god in order for them to be able to handle the uncertainties of life and the uncertainties of the moment they were in and pastor this text is so reminiscent of what we're dealing with now and even more so those that are in india dealing with the uncertainties 
of the pandemic, the uncertainties of an economy that, that, that may not turn around all over the world, the uncertainties of whether or not there will be enough medical supplies and, and food resources for everything, the uncertainties of whether or not we'll be able to take care of our families. And it was in this, that same type of circumstance that Christ spoke these words, but you will receive power, but you will receive power after that the Holy Spirit will come upon you. He was telling the, the believers that you have heard of me. He said, you, you know that I am the Christ that was able to lift those who have been burdened and give those who could not see sight and to give individuals the capacity to walk who had never walked before. I was able to resurrect dead people. I have been able to take a demoniac or somebody that was dealing with psychological and emotional issues and turn their lives around. That is who I am. And it is that same Christ that is speaking to those who could believe what he was able to do in the moment he was with them, but struggling when they were alone. And the truth is now we've got this great gospel, this understanding that, that Jesus Christ is savior of the world, that he can, he, can, he can cleanse us of all of our unrighteousness. We have this Christ who we see through the biblical text that is able to heal that is able to provide, that is able to turn people's lives around. And it is that same Christ that was speaking and reminding the disciples, stay right where you are. That's in verse number four of Acts chapter one. He told them to stay where you are, stay in Jerusalem. And I'm here to let somebody know, someone may have shared with you Jesus Christ. Somebody may have opened up your understanding that God loves you and that the power of God is available for you and for your circumstance. And, and Christ reminded all of his believers, all who had heard of him, stay right there. Don't walk away from the revelation. Don't walk away from this information that will change your lives for the rest of your lives. He told them to stay near Jerusalem, stay near that holy place, stay near the place where you heard and saw me do my work, stay there. And there's somebody that's heard of Jesus Christ. And, and I don't know who, who shared him with you, but if a pastor or a missionary has shared him with you, stay close by them because there is more that God has in store. So he told the people of God to stay in place, to, to not depart from Jerusalem, to not depart from that place where they first believed and they first heard of Christ. He told them to stay in place. And I'm here to tell someone on this evening, stay in place, stay close to, to that understanding that God loves you. Stay close because God has more in store for you. Then not only did he tell them to stay in place, but then he made them a promise that, I, that, that, that all I need you to do is just wait because a promise is coming. That's in verse number four. It said, stay, stay where you are. Don't depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the father. God is telling us that not only do we need to stay in place, but we got to remain patient because we've got a promise. God is saying, yes, there's more in store. I'm promising you. 
that there is something else after your understanding of who Christ is. There is something else after you gaining a relationship with Jesus Christ. There is something else after you believing in Jesus. He said, I need for you to not only stay in place, but I need you to be patient. Because there is something about getting information and running forward without waiting for the revelation. God is saying, I've got more in store. And there may be somebody listening to me in India telling me that I don't have time to wait. My situation is critical. My circumstances, they, they deserve an immediate response. And I'm telling you, you can trust the very timing of God. The disciples had to learn that same thing, that, that Christ was asking them to be patient in a time where it felt like they needed an answer and they needed it quick. They needed a resolve and they needed it immediately. And Jesus said, but wait for the promise of the father. He is literally saying when you stay in place and when you're patient, there's a promise that's coming to you. And God, God told them that the promise, the promise was not money. Excuse me. The promise was not money. The promise was not materials. The promise was not living in a mansion. The promise was not traveling around the world. The promise was not fame. The promise was not being able to have and do whatever you wanted to do. But the promise was power. And God is telling us even in this hour. I need for those of you who have heard of who Jesus is to just stay in place. Be patient because there is a promise. God is saying, I'm going to rise up in a people who will just believe in me. And there is an unquenchable power that I am giving them. There is an unstoppable power that only comes from the very presence and power and person of God. He said that, that there is a promise and that promise is power. He said that you will receive power. He's literally telling them you will be authorized once you get this power. You will be allowed once you get this power. You will be sanctioned once you get this power. You will be equipped to do whatever is necessary. You will have what is necessary to live a, a, a powerful and a profound life. And God is telling us on today that I've got a promise. And it's a promise of power. There are three words that 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 are are are, are found in the New Testament for power. The first word is Ale. Ale A L E Ale. That word Ale means strength. It means strength and capacity and ability or strength and capacity. It means literally that, that the power that God gives you will give you the strength to make it through this journey. It will give you supernatural strength to endure difficulties. It will give you power. And there's someone listening under the sound of my voice. You just need strength. And God is saying, I have that strength and I have it for you. Life may have taken so much of your strength away from you, but the power of God will give you strength to continue on, strength to have joy, strength to share strength, to serve. He will give you strength. That's one of the words for power. The next word for power, the next word for power we find in the New Testament, Testament is dunamis. 
dunamis. That is spelled D U N I M U S. Dunamis. Dunamis power is the authority. It is the authority. And God is saying, I am giving power to believers in this hour to have the authority to speak to powers that believe they cannot be brought down. God is telling somebody, I will give you the authority to speak. I will give you the authority to stand. I will give you the authority authority to, to ask me anything. And that authority will change things in your life. And there's someone that feels like everyone has power over them, but the very gift of God, the promise of God will give you power. It will give you the authority over demonic forces. It will give you the authority to see things different in your life and in the lives of your family and friends and community. That second word is dunamis and dunamis is the authority to speak and see things change, the authority to stand when other people are bowing down, the authority to pray and ask God to move in your life and watch the power of God move for you. The last word, the last word for power that I want to share on this evening is exousia. Exousia. E X U S I A. Exousia. E X U-S-I-A, exousia. That word means ability. Ex is, exousia is a compound word. And exousia literally means that, that you get this ability out of nothing that you had on the inside of you. And there is somebody out there that feels like you don't have the power to lift your head or the power to make things different in your life. And God is saying that I will give you the ability I will give you that ability in your own flesh, in your own mind, in your own person. I will give that through the power that only comes from God. Jesus Christ spoke to the disciples who had heard of him. And he said, stay close to Jerusalem. Stay close to the holy place, but wait for the promise. And when we're in place, we've got to be patient because God has more in store. He wants to give us power. He wants us to have power so that we will be able to pray and the power of God send healing to bodies. He wants us to have power so that we will be able to see families fed and needs be taken care of. God wants to give us power. And there's somebody out there. You want the very power of God. And I want you to know that it's available to you through the Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. He is the son of God. He can be your savior and he can give you the power to see your life changed in an amazing way. You'll be able to see the power of God change the way you think, the power of God, heal and deliver and set free the power of God is available. And all you've got to do is receive Jesus because he has a place. He has a promise. He's asking for us to be patient. 
And in that waiting, the very power of God came. And the power of God is available to us today. The power to see yourself living eternally with God is available today. The power to see bodies healed is available today. That power is through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Will you pray with me on this evening? I ask that all the time. Pastor and his lovely wife are always with me. And that is something that I believe in is prayer. I've seen God heal people of cancer and all types of sickness and disease. I've, I've seen God make somebody's mind come back right. I've, I've seen God extend the days of someone that they had been given a death sentence. I've seen God release people out of prisons because, uh, because he just gave favor. I've seen God elevate people who others always thought would be oppressed. And it was the very power of God. And that power that he gave us to pray enabled us to see change. And so let us pray together. I want to pray first off that somebody receives Jesus Christ on today. Father, I am asking in the name of Jesus that by the power of your Holy Spirit that you would move in the life of this listener that you would make yourself known to them, Father, in such a profound way that they would just say, yes, Lord, unto you and receive you as their Savior right now in Jesus' name. Do it for that man. Do it for that woman, Father. Do it for that young child, Father. Do it for them even now. Father, let them know that they are loved past any type of failure or failing in their lives. Father, you've done it for me and I know you can do it for them. And Father, I'm asking that you would give us the power necessary for those to believe in this world, the power of God to be strengthened, the power of God to speak truth to power, the power of God to be able to keep on going on. God, do it for us on this evening, this morning. Father, this time, that is your servant's prayer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Pastor, for allowing me to share. Thank you. Thank you, man of God. We so blessed in this morning to listen the word of God uh, the, about power. We so, blessed. See, we, 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 we so blessed in this morning. Uh, we want to wait for God's power. Yes. Hallelujah. In time. In time. Yes. Thank you, God. Man, thank God. Yeah, it's a wonderful message, woman of God. We, we, we thank God for you and for your ministry. Always you are doing hard work in the ministry. Uh, we thank God uh, for you and continuously yeah, pray for us and uh, we are also praying for you thank you yeah uh, thank you thank you pastor thank you woman of god bless you. god bless you pastor i thank, thank you so you. much god bless you. you and may the very power of god Continue to bless you and the ministry that God has called you to do, man of God. Amen. Amen. Um, amen. Praise God. Okay, woman of God. I will call you uh, after this live program. All Thank right. you. Thank you so much. Woman of God. God bless. God bless. I'm going to go out. Okay, bye-bye. Okay. God bye. bless. Bye-bye.